Good morning, Internet. Welcome to an Oxygen Not Included Tech Tip video. Today, I'm going to build and show you how to build and go over some of the details a 30 kilogram sour gas boiler. I was watching one of Francis John's video where he was going over some bigger sour gas boilers and felt myself get inspired and thought I'd address some of the issues he was running into. I'll include the save file in the description of the video. Uh, these are my testing bits, but yeah, 30 kilograms. So let's get started. I'm going to pause it. Obviously, I'm in debug mode. This actually wouldn't be that bad to build in uh, survival, but we're going to do it this way. So the first thing is the hot side. And what I found was this blueprint right here was really the key to making this work. This is kind of modular, except you can't really go past 30 kilograms, which we'll go over here shortly. So the general rule is two aqua tuners per 10 kilos that you want to boil, plus another two. So we want to get rid of that. and then give it a floor. So what we've got here plumbing wise, each aqua tuner has its own pipes and you can see them full over here. These aqua tuners are reversed. You can see the inputs are flipped. So this one does the top two pipes into the first liquid tank. And this one does the bottom two pipes through the second liquid tank and that's just to help organize and average out the super coolant. And there'll be a couple of changes down here to this piping. It's just easier to copy it. So we want to get rid of that. That needs to be solid tiles. And the blueprints is just handy, but you do got to do some cleanup. Plumbing wise, if you look over here, this one we want to d dip down below. that and then we've got four tiles oh and I also got my radiant pipes wrong in there that's fine so let me go through we'll fix a bit of the piping when I made my blueprint these are radiant pipes and they should be insulated so this pretty much handles the hot side we have our aqua tuners here running through the various pipes. We'll get super coolant in here shortly. And the idea is as the sour gas comes down, it then condenses and everything falls down here. This door will then open once all this gets a nice pool of liquid. That liquid will then flow through the door. This tepidizer will then help it turn back into a gas. There'll be a bead dripper here, which is this. That then runs the cold counterflow back up, and then we deal with the gas. So that is the hot side. The idea of it being too wide and vertical so that anything that happens all ends up down here. Shipping rail wise, we've got some shipping rail. I'll put some diamond or refined carbon on it. And that's job is to take this heat from down here and help drive it up. So these shipping rails are driving the heat up right up here to the top as well as into the steam turbines. This is kind of a, a test area. So that's what that looks like. Right now I'm going to work on the dripper side. Now the reason there are double insulated tiles is Tim shift plates can interact with each other through an insulated tile and I found when I had them one wide they were interfering with each other and causing some issues, but having them double wide fixes that. So we need a temp sensor and a hydro sensor, and those are the controls. And that will go right here. And over here we have the dripper section. I'll turn these down. I haven't actually turned the oil on yet. So the reason to separate these, I mean, we can see this one in action. 
So as the liquid dripper comes down, it then forces the gas up and exchanges the temperature. Now that, that, that is particularly helpful, but you can see it changing somewhere right around here. So that temp shift is 480, that one, or 380, 430, 504. So that's the point of the dripper, is it forces the pressure up, exchanges heat on the way down. The issue I've seen in other people's designs is if you try to run too much oil in one column, you overwhelm how much heat the game can transfer, even with temp shift plates, into this tile, into this door, into this tile, and into the oil. And there isn't really a good way of not having steam, tile, door, tile, oil. Like, you kind of need those. So if you have all the oil going into one place, it's tough to get enough heat moving through this. By separating them out, you can easily transfer enough heat. Each one of these counter flows by themselves works great. I don't know if you can go much above 30 kilos with a design like this because the pressure in here is, you know, 7, 800. If it gets up to 1,000, these become overpressurized and stop working. So yeah, that is the basics up here. I forgot to do this on the test design over there. Make sure that's not hitting an automation wire. And basically this just says, turn on if you detect natural gas. So its only job is to say, hey, I've got natural gas here. Oop, I don't want that there. Get it out of here. And then as the gas comes up, it then starts being forced down this side. And you can see this up here, the gas is already down to like 160. And then as it runs past these temp shift plates, it cools down, gets into the aqua tuner stack and condenses. In Francis John's video, he was going for frozen methane. This one, we're going for gas. And turns into a liquid. This tepidizer is to help get everything up to temperature. I'll get all the pipes full and then we'll start looking at that. And then this gets the sulfur out. So yeah, let me go through, get super coolant into all the various pipes, uh, turn everything into a vacuum, then we'll start it and show you it warming up. Oh, I forgot one. If I was doing this in survival, I would fill up these tanks as I was building them, but, yeah. This is the sandbox. So right now, I'm just splitting 800 kilograms each. It's probably more than I need. You want just enough to fill these pipes, plus a couple bit more to even out the temperature. And that's got super coolant, that's got super coolant. I need some over here. And with all the pipes rotating correctly, you can see we've got a couple of kilograms in each tank. Oh, and this will just do that. So now to start this up, first of all, I need to make this. Yeah, that needs to be a vacuum. And you could do this with the pump in survival mode. Again, debug, I get to just do it how I want. Okay, right. so the way I would start this up in survival mode is I would have that there. Oh, I also need uh, to get stuff onto the rails. We'll do that at the same time, so rail. Yeah, and then I'll put in a pump for some water. All right, so we got the rails filling up. And so what I was saying is in survival mode, I put a little bit of water down here 
and we want this bottom one set to negative 175. That starts up this one aqua tuner with that little bit of water. It can then turn it into steam. And so that way you don't risk overheating these other ones. These we want to set to that if they're above 700. These are set to 550. These are set to five kilos, so we can actually put in some oil. Oh, you need to be set to natural gas. And so that's, this will fill up a little bit, and then that will turn it off. All right, shipping rails are full. We can get those out of there. So with this little bit of water, I'm just waiting for this aqua tour to turn this into steam. And we'll leave those open. Once that turns into steam, I can do this one as well. You know, we've got a lot of stuff to warm up, so we don't want to have, you know, 4,000 kilograms of water. We want just a little bit to make some steam, and then we can start to pump in more and more once we get steam throughout. If you put in too much water, it just takes forever to warm up and you'll never get there. So, let's dump in some more water. And now that some steam is getting up here, we can set these to the same amount. Yeah, come on, copy. You see how much faster this one's heating up because there's not a whole lot of steam pressure up there. Yeah, so we gotta wait. And this just, when you're dealing with a big steam room like this, this is what you gotta do. Just one bit at a time. As these get warm, they're also gonna heat up the stuff on the rails. It's just a lot of mass when you've got this much stuff going on and you've gotta get it up to 600 degrees. Yeah, so right now the steam pressure is seven and we definitely want that to be higher. So next bit of water. But now we've got more stuff up to temperature. These rails will soon get up to steam temperature and they'll also help keep everything vaporized. Now these top ones will cool down to the negative 160 and negative 175 really quickly because there's nothing for them to interact with. It's this bottom one, you know, these bottom two that are going to do the most work and that's what this tepidizer is for. Yeah, this one's already down to temperature. But now the refined carbon is up above boiling so that will keep the water vaporizing as we build the pressure. I want to get it to like 25, 30 kilograms at least, probably higher probably 100 just because of the amount of heat we're going to be sucking out of it in the interest of my time even though i get to pause you guys this is just going to keep getting warm i am going to spawn in some hot steam so i've got the pressure up to about 25 i'm going to spawn in steam at about that pressure there we go uh Stuff in here was still chillier than what I spawned in, so we only got up to about 400 degrees. I might go and spawn in some more here. But you can see the temperature is coming up. I've got the pumps in place. They're getting rid of the bit of polluted oxygen that was still in here, because... Yeah, they're going to do that. So this one's just going to keep going. We need to get up to about 550. For, you know, it's 403 for this to turn to petroleum and 550 to turn into sour gas. So that's all we're waiting on, and it just takes a while. This has also got to get down in temperature, and right now pretty much this one aqua tuner is what's doing it. So these are not fast startups. 
But if you're building something this big, you've got thermium, you've got super coolant, you've got time. Just know that it takes a while to get up to temperature. The more steam you have in here, the longer it's going to take. So now we're starting to get over to petroleum. So we got about another 100 degrees to go. Like this is almost up to sour gas level, but the shipping rails are still about 30 degrees short. Oh, and I have, I put these in the wrong place. That one's supposed to go through those tiles. I guess it doesn't matter if it's going through the doors. Oh, here, let me redo this. Yeah, let's do it like that. All right, let me... I didn't try it like this before, but we can definitely find out. Alright, and with that last injection of heat, we should be getting pretty close to flashing this. Eh, high speed mode is doing good. They apparently just did a game update, which should be uh, improving performance. another 30 degrees as you can see this is cranking out the heat hits these rails and comes right up to here so it's pretty efficient at moving heat from only this one aqua tuner all right i just injected some more heat to help move this along and yeah there we go i might have to mainly put that into a vacuum so yeah, a little bit just came out and that's fine. There actually won't be enough pressure over here to do much of anything. But as soon as sour gas starts hitting these pipes, then these aqua tuners can start to turn on and generate more heat. Let me clean up the gas in this side and then it'll be time to watch this run. Yeah, so now sour gas is coming around. Temperature over here is getting all nice and warm. And now these aqua tuners are turning on. And really, once these start turning on, they're generating heat right next to where you need it. These are going to be the ones that run the most because they're getting the hot sour gas first. So we're not quite up to full running mode yet, but we are starting to generate more and more heat, which will make this all go much, much quicker. And see, these are already doing good counter flow. Where the petroleum's flashing up there, we just need this one to pop off. So it needs just a little bit more heat and then it should go. Now the primary cooling for this is actually the oil. The oil itself is what keeps this room cool. These steam turbines are just there for the extra. So we're waiting on the pressure over here to come up and the amount of liquid over here to increase. Oh, I forgot. These guys. These also mess with the heat a little bit, so it's good to get that going and out of here. This gets rid of the sulfur in case you want to use it for anything. But leaving a bunch of sulfur in the room, all that mass can mess with your sour gas boiler, so getting it out of there is a good thing. And miscellaneous sulfur. And then I hook it to a clock sensor just so it's not running all the time. Now all this coming down helps cool this area down. You can see it's all condensing right about there, so now we've got two to three aqua tuners running. These doors are now activating, which means the counter flow is working and we've got enough heat in the room for these to turn on and off. So we can start this pump running. This runs the bead pump to force the gas from here up. 
I was using the dev liquid pump, but I found after a save and restart that they would only be running at 50%, which was weird. So let's crank these up. That will help increase the pressure, get more gas flowing, get more of these aqua tuners to activate, which will generate more heat. These are set to 700, so still got another 100 degrees before the active cooling starts running. And we'll set you to 25. That would sell full valve, so hook up the pipe. There, that will now rotate. So we've already got some, you know, 200 kilograms of methane down here. We'll let these settle out because turning them up means we're not, we don't quite have enough heat yet. So these will turn off as soon as the hydro sensors have too much fluid and they'll wait for enough heat to start up again automatically. I've slowly worked the pressure in here up to 75 kilograms and we've got plenty of heat being generated by the aqua tuners. Now we just need these to get up the last bit, get a bit more sour gas going, but there's 30 some odd kilograms of gas pressure already over here. So these have got some work to do to get rid of that. So I'm not too worried about these getting up to temperature. Yeah. We'll crank it back into high speed mode. And right now I don't want this counter flow doing anything because I want to generate as much heat as possible until these are all going. All right, so the first one's starting to flash. Second one's flashing, third one's flashing. And there goes the door. And you know as soon as the door starts going that you've got enough heat being generated. And so this one's now down to temperature and we gotta wait for enough methane to come down here for this one to run. So it's these top ones that now produce the most heat, which you need the gas for. You see the gas pressure up here is 35. By the time you get to here, it's grams. Up here, it's coming up, we're at 150. Yeah, we still need a bit more heat in the room. Yeah. Mostly these three are running and this one's turning on and off occasionally. These are now starting to flash again. The pressure in here dropped a bit. Well, these were turned off, but it's now coming back up. So yeah, I think it's just a nice simple modular design. We're getting quite a bit of methane down here, which is great. That means as soon as we want to counterflow it, we can, and we'll get plenty of gas pressure out of it. But right now we just want everything to get up to temperature and the pressure over here to keep increasing. Got the pressure up here at the top of the stack, you know, 250 kilograms. Right now we're running at seven and a half per, so is that 21? Yeah, 15, 22. And over here, the pressure's coming up. And then I went up the pressure to 100 kilograms in here. Yeah, and now these are all nice and bouncing. And with that, let's crank it all the way up. Reason being is you need the sour gas coming through in order for these to be generating heat. You can see the nice pool of methane we've got going on. Once these doors start opening, then I'll start the counter flow. Those doors are starting to open. Let's open this door. And so now all this methane will slowly flow out that way. 
is since it just says if it's, you know, pretty much below the vaporization point of methane, turn this tepidizer on. We just got a whole big slug of pressure up that way. Now this dropper is going to force the natural gas up. And that nice cool natural gas will help counter flow the temperature of the hot sour gas and make it so these don't have to work quite as hard. You can see we're up to six aqua tuners running and 10 kilos. And we'll see, I didn't bother doing the math as to exactly how many pumps this takes, but it's a huge amount. So there it is. That is a 30 kilo sour gas boiler. Obviously this one's been over here running this entire time. I just, I'm using this speed pump just to pressurize this room, but you can see it's, ooh, it's already up to a thousand kilos. So I'm over pressurizing the vent, so we gotta do that. So yeah, these two are turned off because I realized I had too much cooling. And as you can see, these steam turbines barely even turning on. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you, Francis John. I'll link his video for inspiring me to go super gigantic. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to run the math real quick as to how many natural gas generators you need for this. If you want to burn all this. Or you could slap in some more aqua tuners, liquefy it, and freeze the gas and use it that way. Okay, so it takes that many pumps once this gets fully up to speed. And that is 234 natural gas generators is what you need to fully use all the methane this can produce. 224, it's 223.3. That's a lot. That is a ridiculous amount. I even had to put in a second dev generator because I was afraid this one wouldn't be enough to run all the pumps. So thank you all very much for watching. Like I said, I'll include the save game file so you guys can play around with it. But yeah, 30 kilo sour gas boiler. Oh, it's huge.